You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. The story of the Israelites versus King Jabin of Hatsor in Joshua 11 begins impressively. When King Jabin of Hatsor heard of this, he sent to King Jobab of Madon, to the king of Shimron, to the king of Achshaph, and to the kings who were in the northern hill country and in the Araba south of Kinneroth, and in the lowland, and in Naphoth Dor to the west, to the Canaanites in the east and the west, to the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, and the Jebusites in the hill country, and the Hevites under Hermon in the land of Mizpah. They came out with all their troops, a great army, in number like the sand on the seashore, with very many horses and chariots. All these kings joined their forces, and came and camped together at the waters of Merom to fight with Israel. You've probably never heard such an impressive list of enemies. Of course, some of them are the usual suspects. The Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, and the Jebusites. Well, just on their own, they sound like a list of the enemies of Israel, the peoples whom God chased out before them. But then there's all the others, the people we've never heard of. Who was King Jobab of Madon? Who was King Achshaph? Or rather, where was Achshaph that someone was king of? And who was he? And what's this Naphoth door to the west? Yep, all these peoples and kings, the ones who are familiar, the usual suspects, and those whom we've never heard of before, all of them gather. And in verse 4 we discover, not much to our surprise, that when they came out with all their troops they were a great army. The text then uses a horrible cliché. They were as numerous as the sand on the seashore. But sometimes clichés work. Sometimes just using a cliché underlines what you're saying. In this case, the horrible cliché of the sand on the seashore underlines that what's being said is a horrible cliché. Israel's enemies were huge, numerous, and powerfully impressive. It's the little guy against the big guy. A cliché. So we'll use a cliché to describe it. And they've got very many horses and chariots. The military technology that Israel feared from the peoples of the plain. So all these kings joined their forces and came and camped together. They're a united bunch. And they came with one purpose to fight with Israel. And then it gets dead simple, after all this complexity. Verse 6. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them, for tomorrow at this time I will hand over all of them slain to Israel. You shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. Notice how God promises that the very technology they fear, the very equipment they fear, will be made useless afterwards. Not before, but afterwards. And then, of course, as we find out in verse 7, it all happens just as God says. So Joshua came suddenly upon them with all his fighting force by the waters of Merom and fell upon them, and the Lord handed them over to Israel. It's as simple as that. All that fanfare and the fight is over in a couple of verses. I don't think that's the historian's clumsy desire to make a compendious list. I don't think that's the primitive like of piling things up, repeating yourself. No, I think there's a serious and theological point being made. God bless.